we sort of recognised that there was an opportunity to uh, link in the fact that we've got some good connections and corridors, but we've got some gaps in the system too. Yeah, I think one of the first things that we got into was nest boxing. So let's have a look inside. And that was in, in recognition that there's a two-fold process there. We had an opportunity to gain some understanding and awareness amongst the local community about the important critters that we've got in our neck of the woods. And I knew that um, nest boxes were, were a, a really pivotal tool um, to enable us to get out during the daytime instead of the nighttime and see these things. Actually, this design is, as Tony was saying, one of our early designs, side bottom entrance, and it's actually got a baffle or a piece of wood which is designed to stop exotic birds, introduced birds like starlings, occupying the boxes, and it's very successful in that regard. It's generally been good for keeping bees out of boxes too. Um, we've had a couple only occupied by feral bees. Let's have a look inside. Four gliders. The Kudjiwar Valley's changed a lot over the years, as have many valleys. A lot of that's due to the fact that communities have been able to get together and work through land care groups, through private enterprise, through government agencies, through local farmers, and find out what the needs of that community are and to work together to help that community. I've never thought that land care was a numbers thing. A, a few committed people can make a big difference because what, what you're actually trying to do is motivate and provide an example and provide information to a lot of other people who aren't in land care. So I see land carers as a driver for environmental works, but, but not always done by land care people. With the um, education and uh, field days that uh, land care has run, um, yeah, definitely it's um, been a learning process of farmer learning from farmer, and that's part of the pasture program where we do farm walks um, from one farmer to the other to see whether he's sprayed, sowed, or whether they've sowed um, prior to that. It's really important uh, the diversity of people we have in our, within our groups and the ability for them to get out and uh, tell their story. If you want to know something or find out about something, there's usually someone who knows something about it and if they don't, they usually lead you down a path. It's good for, good for the farm business because you get out and talk to, to other people about what they're doing and see different ways of doing things. The fantastic thing about Lancare is that learning from each other. I mean, that, and, that's, and it's getting together an, an, an education, really, or awareness. I mean, if that's education, it's going to be formal or informal, learning from each other. But it's, it's increased awareness of, of, OK, if we care that we can, you know, did you notice that you see those birds now that you didn't maybe see before? And there's new seedlings coming up, or, or there, there's native grasses there, or there's just that, that whole health. And, and it really is playing a, a major part in the, the community. We're, we're just um, looking at ways that we can actually to start to, to readdress it and, att and attract more of the younger people. We are getting a little bit, bit older in Nankere in a lot of cases. And not only just the, the school kids, but more that, that youth. Yeah, and I think when people see others doing something, they're more inclined to do something themselves. I think this, the, the ownership of agricultural land will will become a, a much more important issue. It, it should be higher up than it is now. I think land care is vital in schools to get kids thinking about their natural environment. One of my main purposes, I guess, uh, with Barrandu Land Care has been to use the internet to document all the activities and the meetings and uh, stuff that we create and generate, the photos that we take and, uh, and in a couple of cases the movies that we've made to promote our organisation. Increasingly all those things are available from our website. I think that gives us more leverage when it comes to funding applications, it gives us more credibility. We can point to the sorts of tasks that we've carried out and projects we've run successfully and in my mind that's a, that's a real plus for, for our organisation. If we didn't have land care, or in the case of the fires, I think we would have been all disjointed. We wouldn't have 
um, sort of being able to get together so quickly. It was sort of, um, because we are all connected, with Franco we meet every month, even though it's a small executive. That's all you need, I guess, to have that connectedness you know, throughout the community. Three or four years ago, we won the state um, land care award for sustainable agriculture. And since then, there's been a steady stream of, of um, visitors from all over the state and interstate. And even quite a few of the finalists in the national final uh, have visited. Everyone's got it in them. We could do so much. We've got amazing plants and animals. Um, and so obviously unique and really different to everywhere else. And I think it's been overlooked, the value. I think Landcare has raised the awareness of the value, that it's there, it's special, it's what makes us different to the next, you know, catchment three, catchments over. It's one of the things that make it it's different. That flexibility and that willingness to change, um, well, do you think that that's sort of the future of Landcare, that it has to keep developing like that? Um, it can't afford to stagnate and say, well, we've done this, we've planted a few trees, we've changed a bit of erosion, um, you know, that's all we're going to do for the moment. Yeah, I think with most organisations, you've got to keep changing to keep up with the times. And um, it's an, an well, I, I look at on it as like an evolutionary process. Over 25 years, there's just been such a, a huge shift in the way not just the farming community, but everyone thinks. If, if you look at um, all the land uses that contribute to um, impacts on, on things like waterways or soils or whatever, just the, the, the shift in that thinking has just been remarkable. And, and land care can take a lot of credit for that. Not all of it, of course. The biggest visual change with land care since it started here is the um, fencing off of the erosion whether it be creeks or gullies and the plantation of trees, whether it be for um, windbreaks or, um, or the erosion control. And I think that we have made complete landscape change in some areas, especially in our local land care group. I think you can look around and you can see complete landscape change. We've got photographs back to the 1940s and we've got uh, photographs now in, in the 2000s and it is just so significantly different, it's amazing. No longer is it an individual person just trying to do their own thing. We do work together very strongly as a group. The little bit of loss of land that, that I've had by fencing them, fencing the gullies or the creeks out has been yeah, uh, a big, big improvement on pasture quality because you've got shading and wind protection on your pastures. It's just an amazing change in in understanding, I think, from everyone about how important it is to protect the environment if you want to keep what you've got. A lot of things would never have ever happened without Landcare, I can rest assured you that. Mm, that's what Landcare does. If governments really thought about it, about this huge army of people that are mobilised here, all wanting to improve the environment, now why wouldn't you capitalise on that? by? by keeping the funding coming. Somewhere you've got to be able to provide some sort of funding so that the people who don't fit into any of those categories can still do, do something. You know, you hear that said a lot, oh, we're all working together and we're all in partnership. It, it, sometimes it doesn't mean much. It's amazing how many landholders here don't seek funding. She said, if we put in for it, we might be lucky. So we did, we put in a submission, mainly on erosion down Mittermatite, you know, which had been badly cleared. So lo and behold, we got $65,000 for two years. When I drive into town now, I think, ha, look at those trees we were responsible for. It was all project-based, um, and I guess it still is to a certain extent, but you had to have a project and then you applied for funding and we sat around as volunteer groups trying to think what the right jargon was to make sure that we got the grant. Once it came, you needed to spend the money pretty quickly, which was a bit of a drama as well. I actually am I'm more a hands-on person and I particularly prefer to get out there and, and help people and, and, and see things happen on the ground. But I realised that to do that, we need funds and, and we've got to apply for them. And that's, that's the great advantage of partnerships. Not only do they enhance your chances of getting uh, funding for the applications that you put in, but there's this ongoing um, effect afterwards. It was very, very vital for our community. 
it, initially it started off as a typical land care activity which was weeds, 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 weeds.